Weren't you glad to be in church this morning? <clears throat> Amen. You know, I was thinking about something this week. Um, we were we got to, had the opportunity to be gone uh, pretty much all this week down in uh, Alexandria, Louisiana, uh, at a supernatural leadership conference with uh, Pastor Mark Hankins and um, actually our uh, pastor from where we grew up, Pastor Mac Hammond, and some other some other ministers that were just really um, outstanding and stellar. The the Lord was talking; He was speaking. And um, anyway, something was said there this week, and I thought it was really interesting, and I, it really, really got me thinking. And, um, and, and I'll ask you guys this question that was kind of, uh, you know, put to my heart. When you're in church, okay, how many of you are here, are here in church? <laughs> okay, right? Because how many of you know you can be, church, be in church and you cannot be present, right? Just like you can be with your kids and not be present, you know, because your mind's somewhere else. But when you're in church... <clears throat> What is the devil doing? This is, I mean, I ask this, is he playing checkers when you're in church? Because, in other words, in other words, what I, that question would be: What is he doing? Is he playing games? Is he is he uh, sitting in his recliner? If you could imagine the, the the devil sitting in his recliner while you're in church, because he's really not that worried about you hearing the word of God, because you're not going to receive it like it's a word from God, so he has the, uh, the, in a sense, he can say, eh, I'm just going to kick back. When you're in church, what is the devil doing? What is he doing? Hopefully, he's going, oh, shoot. Oh, you know, uh, what in the place that I live am I going to do? Right? <laughs> Hopefully, this is what he's saying, right? Hopefully, he's saying, this is what he's saying. He said, Oh, man, I, I just don't want them to get what they're about to hear because the Word of God is alive, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. The Word of God has the ability to set men free. The Word of God, he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. These, 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 the God's children might walk in, in the power of salvation and what Christ came and, and how he died and he was rose again, what he came to give them. Oh, God, uh, oh Lord forbid that they would walk in that. Or, or is he king me <laughs> with, with the, with the other, with the, uh, his other little, you know, his other little imps, cohorts, you know, playing checkers, king me. What is he doing when you set foot in church? Because he has, God has a word for you every time you come, every time. Every time. So this morning, we're going to actually, I'm going to wrap up a, the series. I, I was going to go for a lot longer in the series, but for me, it feels like it's just kind of drug out because we've had so many things in between and, and whatnot. And, and the whole heart of this series called Reset was simply about this, resetting how we think, resetting how we approach God, resetting um, just everything in who we are to where we work as we were created to. You know, we were created to be dependent, not interdependent, but not independent, but dependent upon our, our Lord and Savior, uh, our God, okay? And Jesus Christ came and made a way so that we could come again and come boldly to the, his, you know, our Father's throne and, and get everything that we need. It, it, we wouldn't need to come to a throne if, there, if there, we had no need. So we were created, you know, to be dependent. And so um, in this series, it's been all about humility, about the way we think. I know um, I'm just going to kind of hit the week before last and last week. Uh, the week before last, we talked about making the switch. And making the switch is this. If I'm going to be pleasing to my Father, if he says, without faith, it's impossible to please God, Hebrews 11:6, Because those that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. And we talked about how he is. I mean, he's the one that created the heavens, the earth, the universe, who just spoke, let there be light in the there was, you know, we, Evan and I were talking on the way home uh, from Alexandria, a long drive, and, and uh, uh, she was asking me some questions, and um, she, you know, how many of you w women want your husband to be just like God, right? How many of you, I mean, you want him to be more Christ-like, you know? And so she was asking me these questions, and, uh, and, and she asked me um, how, what I thought about, uh, uh, what, what did you ask me? I don't know, she was Oh, yeah, something about the conference, and, and oh, no, 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 she was talking to me. She was talking to me, and she was, she was sharing her heart, and then she, and all, and she, you know, how many, you know, when a lady shares her heart, there's a lot to share, right? <laughs> and so you don't, you, you're like, whoo, Jesus, God's speaking, right? And so she's sharing, she's sharing, and then she asked me this question, right? She said, so, so what did you think? And you know what I said? That was good. <laughs> 
How many of you guys say that? Yeah? How was your meeting? How was your, she says, so you, you, you go to like a board meeting or, or you go to meet with somebody and you, you're there for two hours and you come back home and they go, um, how was your meeting? What, is, what does the guy say? It was good. And all the girls are like, boo! But we're just like being like God, right? He said, he, when he, you know, if it was a woman that was God, he, the woman would have said, let there be light and then, and stars, and nebulas, and black holes, and this, and this, and this, and this. God just said, let there be light. And then he said, it's good. Yeah. How many of you are glad that God is not a woman? He would have described, he said, hey, let me, let me, uh, let me create all of the garden, and a rose bush, and one that has color, and one like this, and one like that, and then put it, uh, how many of you are thankful? He's just like, uh, and it's good. And then, and then when something wasn't good, what did he say? Uh, that's not good. <laughs> How was it? Not good. How was your hamburger? Good. She's like, what, what, what? They want so much detail, don't they? But thank God we can be, just remind, next time they, they, they get upset, guys, I'm here, here for you in the corner, just tell them, you asked me to be like Jesus. You're praying this. This is what's happening. It's your prayers, okay, to become more and more like our Father. We're becoming more and more like our Father. All right. So anyway, <laughs> it's good, all right? So, um, and so we talked about uh, just a, a, couple, uh, a couple weeks ago, we just talked about making the switch and, um, and making the switch and making the switch that we have to first, if we're going to be pleasing to God, we have to know that he is, that he is a, he's a rewarder or that he is and he's amazing. He's wonderful. This is why we got off onto the, the heavens and the earth. He's the one that he's the creator of all, right? He is well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ever ask, think, or hope, or even imagine. This is who we serve. But also, he's a rewarder. And we kind of hit on this, and we went through it real fast. And so I'm just going to, I'm not going to take time to go through it. But his name, w w where he refers to himself as Elohim, which means the creator God. That's how he referred to himself. But w the moment that he came in contact or created man, he referred to himself a different way, w whether it's J Yahweh or Jehovah, de depending on which translation you look at. He, that word right there means I'm a covenant God. And then on top of the covenant God, he begins to call himself uh, a covenant God of healing, the covenant God of provision, the covenant God of victory, the covenant God. And so how do we know he's a rewarder? Because he's thinking, put it in his name. And he said, I am a rewarder. I am, I'm binding myself. And he, he cut covenant by himself because he could cut covenant by no greater. And so he said, I want you to know, I want you to know that not only that I am, we got to get a bigger view of who God is, but we also have to realize that he is, and he, he called his own name, he names himself the one that's in covenant to, to, to be a, a blessing, to be a rewarder, to be, and you can go through and you can look at the names of God, all, all the names of God in the Old Testament, you'd see, like, wow. He is my banner. He is my victory. Wow, he is my provider. Wow, he is Jehovah Rapha, my healer, the one that heals me. He is the one. No, no, no nothing else heals me but him. So he is a rewarder. So if I'm going to hit reset, if I'm going to if I'm going to click over and, and the reset is this, taking what he says over what I think. So we talked about that and we're just because really well, this whole series uh, that we're, we're wrapping up today is all about humility and coming and and bringing ourselves because this is what humility is bringing yourself under his rule. I love that scripture. You know, we quote it quite often. He who dwells underneath the what the shadow of the almighty shall remain what fixed solid immovable protected yeah, everything we 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 it's so funny how we, we don't want to be under him but yet we want to be under him but if we realize how good he is and that he is and that he is he's able and he's a rewarder we would want to remain fixed there and come underneath submitted submitted underneath humility bringing ourselves under humility is actually something only you can do to yourself only you you have to that's your decision your role to, to submit or to, to humble yourself bring yourself Underneath, and then last week, uh, pa uh, our, that Pastor Ben, our youth pastor, he talked about urgent, urgent, and how you and I have a message. And I'm uh, just going to wrap up that whole message in this one line. He didn't say it, but this is to me the, the message: because you've been reached with the, the gospel, you have a responsibility to reach with the gospel. You and I, because we've been reached with the gospel. 
Because it, we've been, it, light has come, we, you and I have the responsibility to reach with the gospel. I'm here today not just to hear it, but to hear it so that I can go beyond these four walls with the message of Jesus Christ. To know him and make him known. To know means to, to have an exchange. If I, if I know my wife, it's because there's an exchange. To know, I gotta, I, there's got to be an exchange. And i got to know him so that I can exchange who he is with somebody else. This is why we're here. All right, but we're going to talk this morning, and I believe this will, this will be a, 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 a message that just is straight from the Lord, all right? This is what he wants us to hear this morning, and we're going to talk about firewalls, firewalls. Now, what do I mean by that? We've been talking in the series called Reset, and we've kind of used electronics along the, you know, that analogy along the lines of everything. How many of you know what a firewall is on a computer? Okay, a firewall is something that's in place. So that you can conduct business, in, in other words, you can continue to send things out, right? But, but the wrong things cannot penetrate. Like in other words, the viruses that are wanting to come, they get blocked, okay? This is what a firewall is, it, but yet you can go through it. It's like you can see through it, you can, you can conduct business, but yet if viruses and things that are trying to attack can't make it through, all right? I mean, I looked it up. Here's the, the, the very actual definition of a firewall is this. a part of a computer system or network that is designed to block unauthorized access while permitting outward communication. Blocking unauthorized access. I wonder, and this is what we're going to talk about, We're going because we're, we're going to get our firewalls up. How often, how often is Satan, does Satan have unauthorized access in our lives and we don't even know it? He's on the opposite side of the wall, and we don't even realize it. We don't even realize it, that he is, he's, he's, uh, he's working in our lives, and we don't even see it as him working in our lives. All right. I want to give you a couple of scriptures, what we can see. It says in Luke chapter 4, verse 13, it's, this is out of the NIV. It says, when the devil had finished all his tempting, he left him for a more opportune time. This is when Jesus was led away into the wilderness, and, and Satan came to tempt him, right, and talk to him, and, and tempt him, and it says this, it says, this Satan went away for what? A more, okay, so he is looking for a oppor more opportune time, or he's looking for an, uh, a time where, in a sense, it would be easier to penetrate. How many of you know that's true? This is how he works, Okay. So, hey, somebody say, say, let's just make sure we're there. Satan's coming back for you. He's coming back for you. Satan's coming back for me. Say it. Satan's coming for me. But I'm ready. Satan's coming for me, but I'm ready. You know how, why? Because I'm, we're going to talk this morning about how he comes. You know, if, if we could keep him on the other side of the firewall, or when we'd recognize when he's coming, you, you would conduct business a whole lot easier. When you send that email, it would look, go out the right way. Other, you know what I'm saying? When you, when you send your prayers, they'd be, uh, they wouldn't be hindered. Listen, all right? I want you to see this in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9. It says this out of the NIV. It says, be alert and be sober. Be of sober mind. Be aware, he's saying. Hey, hey guys, be aware of how Satan works. This is what he says. Your enemy, the devil, and that word devil is really interesting because so often we read devil and we just think a guy with a pitchfork. The same, the same thing that we think when you see the word Satan, we think, oh, that's just the little red guy with the pitchfork. But no, he, this, this word that is used to describe, matter of fact, Paul uses this word devil instead of Satan, especially in the latter part of his, his, his epistles or his letters to the churches. He uses devil, not Satan, because he re recognizes, listen, after going on a missionary journey or two or three and going into a church and another church and another church and another church and then revisiting all those churches, it's no longer your, your enemy, Satan, it's the devil. Your enemy, which is just like Satan, except for it's your enemy that does his business this way. So the name devil is actually descriptive of how he works rather than just the fact that you have an enemy. You have an enemy, listen, that does his bidding through slander. Through slander. And we're going to talk about that here in a moment. It goes on to say this. It says, be sober. Be your enemy, the devil, the slander, prowls around like a roaring, li look, like a lo roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And then it says this. It says, resist him. 
Resist them. Stand firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kinds of sufferings. So here's what I want to talk about. The same way the enemy is getting into, into your life is the same way he's getting into your life and your life and your life. Listen, the same way that he's getting into every, he says he's working the same way. And often we don't even see it. And we don't even know that we're actually playing into his hand. So, if he tells us to be aware, be sober-minded of your adversary, the devil, and he tells us that we're to resist him, how do we resist him? Well, if we're going to resist him, we've got to know how he operates, okay? And we're going to look at that. It says this, Ephesians, because we're going to resist him. There's two things. If you're going to resist somebody, how many of you know if you arm wrestle somebody, you want to make sure... That you get, you ever, anybody ever arm wrestle anybody in here? All you ladies? You know? No? How about you guys, right? I know my wife has arm wrestled a few ladies in her day. Um, <clears throat> it's true. But how many of you know when you come up and you put your arm up here, if you've ever arm wrestled with somebody and somebody puts their hand on top, their job is to make sure what? Nobody has an advantage, right? So you, when you get up here, but if, if you're arm wrestling, you want to make it even, but you want to make sure that you may, you, especially if the person may be really, really good you're going to be going against. Like Ben, he'd really want to try to get an advantage over me, right, Ben? Come on. Come here. <clears throat> okay, and I wasn't planning on doing this, but yeah, let's go like this. So... He, ben, Ben's going to try to beat, see, he's got an advantage already. He's already got me leaning. Listen, so we need a hand up here. Somebody get a hand up here. And he's, he, might, he might beat me this morning. Okay, hold on, hold on. See, who has the advantage right now? I need a foothold. Yeah, yeah, you got you to give me some foothold here. All right. Okay, he's so been, the, he's been doing jillion. All right, just kidding. So here's the deal. All right, all right, one more time. I just want to see you. Here we go. Ready? Go. Oh. <laughs> All right. He got a, He got an advantage. That's why. Listen. So often the enemy is getting a foothold, or listen, he's getting an advantage. He's got, he's got a, 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 a leverage that we don't realize. And it says this here. It says this in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 or 27 or 25. It says, Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of one body. It says, In your anger do not sin and do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give, what? What does it say? A foothold. An advantage to the enemy. <clears throat> now, I want to just take a moment and, and talk about why is it that you and I get mad? Why is it that you and I get frustrated? Let's just think about your, your husband or your wife or a friend. You know, have you ever went to bed mad? Have you ever been frustrated with something? Have you ever been dealing with a relationship? Listen, it's always a relationship. It's always a relationship because God created relationships. You and me, God wants, the, there's, there, there's something that happens when we're together. Listen, every time you see in the word, when, when they were in one accord, you see God able to do great things. When you're in one accord with your wife, everyone's like, hey, but God's like, hey. God's like, I can move in that, in that place. When, when, the, when, the, when a church is in one accord, God can, God, miracles. Listen, the power of God is present. Because the only way you and I can be in one accord is if we have the right view of one another. But why I go to, to bed angry is because of something that has happened, listen, in my view of what went on. In my estimation, my estimation, but where did that estimation come from? Who is the one that's building the case about your wife or your husband or your friend? Who's the one that built the case about the person that scooted up when you were supposed to be able to take a right? You know, I mean, there's no one behind you, but they're, they're just going to, so you can't pull out in traffic, right? And you're like, and they just act like they can't see you. 
No, how many of you ever like, oh yeah, just sit there and act like you can't see me. I'll run right through your side of your door. I'll run you over with my monster truck. No. Have you ever felt like that though? You just get, you got instantly angry because you're like, how come they didn't let me go first? And you're like, wait a minute, I guess they could go first. And you start to, re but you, there's a case, listen, who's doing this? The devil? No, 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 the slanderer. They did that because they think this, da, 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 da. and they begin, he be, begins to build a case, listen, and if he can build a case, you take that case and you call that truth, and now you begin to operate by that, and we wonder why our lives get so off, and so, it, it seems like just turmoil, and garbage, and whatever, because he's a slanderer. Let's keep on going. I want to talk to you this morning, too, about how he, he works against you. You know, he slanders you all the time. He talks evil of you all the time, and you think it's just yourself talking. He's talking evil of you he, 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 uh, all, all the time. You know when you messed up? You know, anybody ever messed up? And then you think, I just don't know if I have favor with God. I just don't know if I can expect God to come through because of how I messed up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's just back up here real quick. How did you have favor with God when he says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, he says, while you were yet sinners, God looked down and he said, I, I got favor on that. That's man. Matter of fact, angels asked the Lord, who's man that you're so mindful of him? Oh, how is it that while we were yet sinners, God sent his son? How is it that John, for God so loved the world, had so much love and favor toward the world, toward us sinners, listen, that he sent his only son? What did we do to deserve that? Listen, you cannot earn God's favor. You can't, earn, but yet, here's, the, the, here's what happens. Is that because you messed up, there's a slanderer that starts talking to you about how you are now away from God. Or, or you're not in a place where God wants to move for you. God doesn't want to anymore. What? What? God doesn't want to move for you. God doesn't want to come through for you financially because of what you did. I mean, what? what who, seriously. And he just starts beating on you, starts slaying. And you know what he's trying to do? Listen, he's either trying to destroy a relationship between one another, or he's trying to destroy this relationship between us two. This is how he always works. This is the only way he works. From the beginning, he's going to try to destroy this relationship or destroy this relationship. Constantly, you look at how he's talking to you. You look, and we're going to talk, we're going to look at that here in a moment about how we need to learn to recognize God's voice, and we need to learn to recognize Satan's voice because often he is a, he's the Bible says he's a deceiver. The Bible tells us that he's a worthy adversary. That tells me this that I better be sober. That means I better be vigilant, just as he said. He didn't say, "Hey, it might be a good idea to be sober. It might be a good idea to be watchful." He said, "Be sober." The same way he said, "Be light." Be still when, the, when he calmed the waves. It wasn't, no, it wasn't an option. Listen, I know this was Paul writing, but Paul was writing by the, by the unction of the Holy Spirit in First Peter. He was talking to the church. Listen, as a mouthpiece of, of our Father, by the Holy Spirit, he says he doesn't, the Holy Spirit doesn't speak anything except for what the Father speaks. And here Paul is writing on behalf of God saying, be sober. You better be aware. Or he'll be behind that firewall, and you won't know what's going on. So he says, do not give the devil a foothold. So <clears throat> if we're not going to give a, in, 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 we're to resist, and we're to give no foothold. Because how many of you know you can resist, but if somebody has a foothold, if somebody has an advantage, you're kind of, you're kind of beat before you start, right? Well, I don't want to be beat before I start. And I, I think God wants you and I to walk in victory. All right, let's keep going here. So, Ephesians, uh, what do you say? Do not give foothold to the en enemy. Don't give him an advantage. Don't give, who is the devil? The one who works through slander. Do not yield to the su suggestions and temptations of who? Of Satan. Who? You know what he wants to do? He wants to take every opportunity to persuade you to cherish unkind and angry feelings. Toward God, how he didn't come through. 
toward your loved one, toward your neighbor. He wants you to take, he wants to take every opportunity for you to begin to nurture them. Because here's what he does. He'll get that foothold, and it usually is right on your shoulder, and he starts just whispering. You know why that didn't happen for you? You know, you know why God didn't come through? Because of you. No, it's because of God. Listen, this is what he's doing. Matter of fact, it says this. It says, and when you're tempted, do not say. This is in James 1.13. It says, when you're tempted, do not say that I am tempted of God. What does it mean to be tempted? It means to test what you believe. Who is it that's testing what you believe? Well, what do you believe? Well, I believe that yeah, how, there's a lot of people in here this morning that are born again, and you believe that your righteousness was not based upon your works. Listen. But it was based upon what Christ did. It's by his grace, but it's through my belief in his, his grace that I'm saved. And yet he comes to us and he tempts us and he gets us to take, he puts the bait out there and he gets us to take, uh, come over to the side of, I got to perform to get God to move for me, to have a hope. And then if I didn't go, if I didn't do good enough, I'm not confident that he'll move. Okay, let's keep going here. So the first, fight, the first step in fighting your enemy is realizing you're fighting your enemy. Like, this is why I said, if you're going to remember something, the devil's coming. Does that mean you need to be scared? No, that just means you need to be aware. Because the Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God who always leads us into victory. But we better be, be aware that Satan's coming. And he's coming, he's looking for an opportunity to, to defame Either your loved ones or the name of God in your eyes. All right, that's his foothold. So Satan is a, uh, let's talk about slander for a moment. It means to overthrow or to throw over. How many of you slander? How many of you have ever been a part of that slander in your friend, you know? You know, the hair salon talk? Well, they just didn't, they just thought this. And you know why they did that? Because this, this, this. They just think they're better than everybody. Da, da, da. Is that really what they think? Is that really what they think, or is that what you think that they think? Or maybe that's not even what you think they think. That's just what you want now others to think. So now you're being used as Satan or as the devil. So it means to, to, throw, to throw over or across. It means to, to do this. It means to, to de defame, or it means to cut down or to slash. Think about that slash. What do you slash things with? What what do I a sword? Maybe a knife, something sharp. A, you slash to cut down. And you know the thing about it is, is Satan is all about doing this cutting down. And it's interesting why God gave us the Word of God. He says in Ephesians, He says, and above all, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Ephesians six twelve, I believe it is, or six eighteen. He says, above all, taking the sword of the Spirit. So we're letting Satan slash. He's always slashing. Listen, you better get the word, not just in here, but you better let the word of God and what you think about the word of God and how he's bringing you the word because the Holy Spirit's always going to bring you the word. Listen, he'll always bring you to your remembrance, everything the Father says. But so often what's happened is, is God brings the word and we don't let it come or let it be heard. We just keep it right here. We better open our mouths unless we want to just look, our lives look like they need to be just all cut up. I mean, we just look like somebody who's been slashing on my life. I'm all beat up. I'll tell you, there's times when and my wife and I, we were talking, this is when it was good. She was sharing some stuff with, you know, I said it's good. She was, here's what it was. She was sharing with me just some things that the Lord had spoken to her con concerning me. And we were having this conversation about my frustration uh, as of late. I felt like every time I minister... <clears throat> And I, and I preach the word, I feel like uh, even when I, when, I, when I feel like I've done good in here, there's this something that starts asking all these questions. Well, you went too long, or you didn't do this, or you didn't communicate this right, or you didn't do this. And there's all this stuff, and, and yet I know how to combat it. Listen, but some, for some reason, the devil got my tongue. And so I, get, I, I literally would get beat up to where, to where when you come into the ring again, listen, when you, you, you kind of come in with your hands down, you just, just hit me once so I can get, get out of the ring. So now you don't even want to fight your enemy. You just hope everything, hope he just doesn't show up. Just hope the devil doesn't show up. Well, let me tell you, he's coming. But so am I. 
And I'm underneath somebody, and I'm with somebody, and I'm underneath the shadow of the owl. I'm, I'm with this guy. Come on. You're stepping in the ring. Because when I step in the ring, it's not just David. Listen. It's the one that's, that's with David. The one that says, you're talking about my God? You're talking about my God? You're talking about, listen, my friend? I don't even call him my friend. He called me his friend. I'm his friend. And you're going to step in here? Let's go. But you better let it come out of your mouth. For God hasn't given me the spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and of a sound mind. So let that come out. So that you can be bold to minister. And I'm not just talking about from the stage. I'm talking about at work. Yeah, well, what are they going to think if you say that? Well, I know that uh, it's my responsibility because I've been reached with the gospel to reach with the gospel, but my life looks like hell, and how am I going to go tell them about heaven? Right? I mean, they know I'm struggling with the same stuff they are, and yet now you have an answer in the moment of their chaos? Yeah! Because I'm the righteousness of God in Christ's name. No, in Christ Jesus. My righteousness isn't on me. It's on Him. And I know I fall short. But because I fall short, am I gonna, and I fall down, am I going to let the enemy keep me down? Or am I going to put the word of God in my mouth and, and, and rise above? Listen. And recognize how He's fighting. And how He's trying to cut me down. Cut you down. Cut the Lord down. All right, let's keep going here. So it says this in James 4, 4, 7. It says, submit to God. Okay? Uh, then, uh, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Humble yourselves there before, uh, before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Brothers, he says this. Do not slander one another. Okay? This is in verse 11. It says, brothers, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother, listen, judges him or, or judges him, speaks against the law and judges it. And if you judge the law, you are not a practitioner of the law, but a judge of it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and to destroy. That's our God. But who are you to judge your neighbor? So here's what, ha here's what this is all saying. It says, submit yourself. It says, resist the devil. And then he goes on a little bit later in verse 11, and he says, hey, guys, if you're going to submit to God, if you're going to resist the devil, in order to resist the devil, you must first submit to God, bring yourself under what he is, but then you better hold your tongue. You better not become judge. We want to know how to resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, like a roaring lion, he's seeking whom he can devour. The Bible tells us, hey, be watchful. Don't give the devil a foothold. You know how you and I give the devil a foothold? By being judge. This is what this, is, this message is about, about the firewall. We give the enemy a foothold when we become judge. Listen, when you become judge of your wife, of your husband, of your coworker, because you're so yielded, because I'm so yielded to judging why that person pulled off or why they cut me off or pulled out or why they cut me off, instantly you make a judgment. Instantly you make a judgment. You make a judgment and you call it truth. That's why. Listen, when the enemy now comes to you with the same accusation about you, you're now trapped. You're completely locked in by a truth. It's not a truth at all. It's a lie. But because you've been calling lies truth, you're wrapped up. And you can't get out of the fire. You're wrapped all in it. I'm telling you, we cannot be judge. Because when we're judge, we're, what's happening is we're calling lies truth. And we're calling a, a lie about somebody else, and we're cutting them down because this is what happens. Satan's coming to cut them down. And then what happens is we call that truth, we call it truth, we call it truth. Then he comes and he starts talking to you about you. And he has you so wrapped up 
And you can't get out. You can't come to the Father because of what you've done. Because it's the truth. That's not the truth. The truth is, you can come anytime, anywhere. Why you want to come is because the Father's drawing you. No man comes to the Father, the Bible says, except for the Spirit draw him. You want to come to him. You want to, you want, you want it to be made right. You want your relationship with him or them, listen, to be mended. But you can't. What? Because you know all the truth. Listen, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is what? What did Satan come to do? Steal, kill, and... Okay. So, if, if when we become judge, we sentence ourselves, listen, to destruction. It's that simple. This is what I'm talking about, a reset. Well, they didn't say hi to me, or they think they're better than me. Oh, really? Where did that come from? But we've taken, we're taking the bait. Listen, we're taking the bait. We're taking the bait over and over and over. We're taking the bait. We're becoming judge. And Satan's whooping our butt. And we don't think God will come through because of what we, do, we, what we did. And, and there was a case that was built. And because we're judge, or we made ourselves judge, what Satan builds, although it's lies because he leaves out the greatest truth there is, we let that build a case and, and, and literally it hems us in. It defeats us. And we don't get up and we don't fight. And literally the purpose and the things where we, we, what we were created for no longer can exist. Like literally it shuts us off. We're not even talking about a reset. We're talking a complete powering down. We're talking, you ever, you know, you ever heard of a, about a virus? You know, what it'll do? It'll completely, ah, man, I've been spitting a lot today. <clears throat> it'll completely, listen, it'll completely shut down the system. It'll erase the purposes. I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Thoughts for, that, are, that are to bring you to this expected end. Thoughts that, that my, the path of the righteous is to shine brighter and brighter and brighter. And, and when, when he gets you to be judge, he can literally just go, everything just shuts off and you're stuck in the pit. Stuck in the pit. So if that's how he works, if this is how he wants to be judge, if this is, he, wants, he wants us to become judge, he wants, us to, he wants to paint a picture that we call right. We go, yep, that's right. And he, all he does is he goes, what do you think of this? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly how it went down. What do you think of this? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly how it went down. And you know what's interesting is? The, th the, w the one time, or the one time you won't be able to see how the enemy's coming is when it has to deal with you. So this is why we always talk to you and get you involved in the conversation between you and the father or you and your spouse or you and your coworker because when your eyes are on you, Listen, when your eyes are on you, he will, he'll, he'll, he'll be just walking around and wham! And you're like, and you're like, see what they did? And your eyes are just all, I wrote a better way to say that, but I'm not going to find it in my notes. But that you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know how, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you write something, you're like, oh, that was really good, but it's going to take too long to find it. <laughs> all right. I'm in. <laughs> so. He says this, submit to God and resist the devil, and he'll, he'll do what? And he will flee. So submitting always precedes resisting. So in other words, submitting means no longer can you be judge. Humi this is humility. You saying, I'm coming underneath you. Lord, is this what you say? You know what I say about them? That I love them. That that's my son. That that's my daughter. That's the one I gave, that's the one I gave my only son for. That's what I say about them. You know what I say about them? I'm not counting a suffered wrong, but I'm believing the best, and I'm hoping the best, and I'm rejoicing in the truth. I know there might be some lies, and there might be some deception here, but I'm rejoicing in the truth. That's what I say. Rejoice in the truth. Be patient. Because who, who, who's talking when God's talking? Love is talking. Listen, when God's talking, love is talking. Whew. Is love talking? Or is it the enemy talking? He says, what he said, if I'm going to resist the devil, this is how we're going to, we're going to learn to get the enemy out of our life, I'm going to have to submit to God. So God, what do you say? 
Because that's what submitting is finding out what God says. Resisting the devil starts by not being judge. How do I resist the devil? Again, first submit. Rec- second, we recognize that I'm not judge. That's it. Submit and sit by saying, yeah, I'm not judge. <laughs> I, I, I don't have the right to judge. Thank God. Thank God I'm not judge. Thank God I'm not president, right? You're like, oh, I could do, thank God, you know, how about being God? Right? Some people go, I'm just thankful I'm not president with all the decisions that have to be made. But thank God I'm not God. All right. So now here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about this, how to know and recognize God's voice. Just in a moment, I've taught on this a lot of times, but I'm taking a completely different approach today. Okay, John chapter 10, verse 3 through 5. Put it up in heavy. It says, the gatekeeper, okay? The gatekeeper opens the gate. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. And it's talking about our Father's voice. And there's two attributes I want to talk about today as we, as we kind of wrap this up and kind of put it in, a, if you will, in a nutshell. It says, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name. And he leads them out. How do you recognize when God's talking? Where is he leading you to? And what names are being said? Listen, I'm going to kind of unpack this. What name is he calling you? What name is he calling them? Dirty. Who's talking? You dirty. No good. Low down, cheating is blankety blank. Yeah, you don't say them. But how many of you have had them come to your mind? And sometimes in the midst of it, you just let them out too. You dirty little thief, right? But it's something else. Listen, what name is being said? Because this is what it says. It says this. It says, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. He said, goes on to say this, when he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because, listen, they know his voice, but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. So what name is he calling you? you know, Galatians chapter 3, 26. Put it up there if you don't mind. Galatians 3, 26. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. So when, when Satan's talking, and, and you're not called a child of God, but you, you're called something else. It's not God talking. Because he says right here, he says, so in Christ Jesus, you're a child of God. So if somebody's talking and talking to somebody, talking about somebody or talking to you, like you're not a child, like, like if, so, if, if you're hearing a voice that is t- completely d- defaming a child of God, listen, it ain't God. I don't care. Listen, listen. All of them were created in His image and His likeness. When He created man, yeah. Well, they're not. They're not a child of God because they're not born again. Wait a minute. It's God's will that all would be saved, right? Okay. They're created in His image and His likeness. We've been born again, but those are still. He looks at as children. He sent His only Son for all of those sons and daughters. So if, if we're talking about, or we're thinking about, or we're making a judgment in our mind, and it's calling them something that a father that loves his children would not call them, who's talking? How about this? How, this is one that happens a lot. John 15, 15. John 15, 15. I love this. It says, I no longer call you servants. You know, you know what a servant has? You've got to try to do something. You're trying to win your master's approval. Trying to win your freedom. You ever seen a movie like that where the, where the slave tries to win the master's heart to win their freedom? Maximus, Maximus. Right. Maximus Aurelius, commander of the... All right, let's keep going. Um, no longer call you servants because the servant does not know his master's business. Instead, here's what he says. I call you friend. So if, you, if you're hearing a voice talk and it's starting to talk about somebody else, not as a friend, listen, who's talking? Guys, 
Satan is, is, is so prevalent in our lives, we don't even realize it. In our nation, we got blacks against white. We got uh, uh, people that aren't from this country against people that are from this country, or immigrants against non, all kinds of crazy garbage. And all it is is slander. All it is is the enemy has a foothold and your ear and my ear or this nation's ear. And so the answer to all of this, listen, it's not based on, based, say it the right way. Well, they're African American, not black. Or, or um, they're not immigrants. They're, or, or what, are they, what do they call it? Illegal aliens. Aliens. Well, they're not. Listen, it's not in the terminology. Listen, it's it, what's behind the scenes. It's the one that's slandering. It's the slander. And if you are going to, you and I are going to fight for relationships, fight for, the, here's what it's about, unity, because where there's, the Bible says where, the, where there's unity, he commands his blessing. This nation, I believe it's, it's completely the Lord, that we're not just the, the America, we're not just the, we're the united states of America, not the divided. And we're saying it all the time. Just like how Abraham had a name change because God said, I need you to know you're the father of many nations. Just like Sarah had a name change. God said, hey, we're no longer just the col this colonies. We're no longer America. We are the United States of America. A place where God commands his blessing. That's who we are. That's where we are. And we got to recognize how the enemy's working. He's always about slander. So if you see slander, you know what you do? Uh, devil, you take your, use your authority over him and say, no, I, I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus, you lying, foul spirit, you take your hands off this community, take your hands off this nation, your workplace, whatever, your boss, I don't care where it is. But we're, we're just, we're just letting the word of God come into our head, but not come out our mouth. And we're getting our butts whooped. Yeah. All right. So what name is he calling you? Is he calling you friend? How about this one? Romans 5, he says, I'm greatly loved while I was yet sinner. Go put it up there. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us. Oh, I'm so loved. I'm so loved that it doesn't matter if I don't make the last shot. You ever felt like that? You got to win somebody's approval? You got to do it good enough? He said, my love for you is not based on how you do, bud. I love you. <laughs> That'll mess you up. How about this one? I love this, Ephesians 2.10. This is for some young ladies. Ephesians 2.10, put it up there. It says, for we are God's handiwork. You know what a handiwork is? Something that God created. It's like, oh, they're perfect. It's something just precious. You are something that God created and he calls so beautiful, so wonderful, Hey, somebody say this. God made me. God made me. I'm not, no, no. no I'm not fat. I'm not ugly. Listen, who's the one that call, talks to you like that? You, I'm not no good for anything. Listen, I'm not all stretched, marked out, and, and whatever you want to call it. Listen, this right here, this has been fearfully and wonderfully made. This is God's handiwork. Well, look at that person, huh? Look how fat they are. I'm just glad I don't look like that. I thank God I don't have cellulite like that. I just thank God. I don't, I don't. Where does that come from? We just let it. We just let it roll on in and roll on out, and we don't even take time to go. Wait a minute. Who said you could be behind this firewall? And we, and here's what's happening. He's behind there, and we don't realize it that our all of our processes, everything that God created, our life is being hampered because we just let them roll right in and roll right out. He's not supposed to come through. The shield of faith. Listen, these are darts. Faith is what God said. Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing what God said. We're letting them roll right in and roll right out. And we wonder how Satan is having having all kinds of his way in our lives. Let's keep going here. Um, so, so we know number one is, is he says he calls them by name. 
So you want to really simply recognize how God, if it's God talking or the enemy talking, because sometimes we just think it's a truth, and it's a truth. But listen, when God speaks the truth, he only, he doesn't count a suffered wrong, so, but he instead rejoices when the truth happens. Listen, go look up chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, what love says. Love's got everything to do with it, because this is who God is, this is how he operates. So what names he call them? But then number two, where is it, where is it leading? He says he leads them out. Listen, when the enemy starts talking to you and it's putting you in a pit and it looks like there's no way out and it looks like there's not enough for the end of the month and it looks like oh, I'm going to have this psoriasis for the rest of my life or it looks like this. Listen, he's talking against God when he's talking about your body. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. This right here, he lives in me, the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead. I gotta start identifying with who he is. I don't, you know, here's the deal. When I don't identify with who he is, what happens is he can talk to me about things, and I don't even realize that it's the enemy. I just think, I'm just, yeah, that's true. Yeah, my body does have an immune deficiency. That's why I do have this. No! We wonder why everything's all hemmed in. No, who are you? What are you? Who are you? Listen, in Christ. God, where is he leading me? Is he leading me into a pit? Because when God talks, he takes me out of a pit and sets my feet on a rock. Am I putting them in a pit? Am I putting them in a cage? Am I slinging mud on them? He took me out of the miry clay. So if he's talking, if God's talking, listen, he's leading you out. If you, if you feel hopeless, well, if you feel hopeless like it's not going to work, stop. And get something out from behind the firewall. Yeah, that's right. No. Nope. This is what God's word says. And this is why he gave us his word. This is why he gave us his promise. Listen, this is why he gave us the sword. You start slashing back. You remember who's with you. Wait a minute, I got a friend. You want to come back in here? Come back in here. I mean, we'll be chasing him down. Listen, we'll be chasing him down. Instead of hiding from him. It's time we go chase his little pitchfork self down. Seriously. Chase him down when he says he don't have enough. He's lying to you and he's wanting you to because, judge that as truth so that he can lock you all up. I've been playing chess quite a bit lately. I like chess. I've always liked chess. And I've played on my, on my iPad or my phone and... Uh, I, I like to play it now on hard. You know, when you play against the computer and you play on hard, and there's only certain ways that you can go, thank God there's some undos. <laughs> you can hit undo, you're like, oh, I didn't see that, all right. But what happens is I, I graduated from just normal to now I'm hard. And I, here's the deal. In chess, you're going after him. He's going after you. He's seeking an opportune time to come in and wreak havoc on you. I think we need to change uh, change the, from the defensive stance and get going on the offense right. and go after him. Right. There's nothing worse than when, when you're playing chess and they make you have to move and because they, they put something there and you got checkmate and now you got to move over here and then they take your queen or they take your rook or they take your... Ah, we're playing for more than pawns usually. All right, let's keep going here. All right, so what, is, what does he tell us? He tells us this. He tells us if we got to recognize this. What name, so if we're going to know when God's talking versus the enemy talking, because so many times it seems like it's, we call it truth. It's true, it's true, it's true. And we think that, yeah, well, that's true. Listen, what, 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 who's talking? Who's building the case? Who's building the case? What name is he calling? What name is he calling? And number two, what's, where is he leading? Because his, his, he's trying to lead to steal, kill, and destroy. He's trying to lead to destruction. All right. And then this, um, oh, thank you, Lord. I think we're going to wrap it up with that. Um, and I, and then I want to, this, this last piece, it says this. It says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end leads to death. Um, but unless, listen, how, okay, here's the deal. So they're talking about you, right? Because we're going to talk, we just want to close with this talk when they're talking about you. So what do you do when they're talking about you? Because how many of you ever felt like you've been slandered? And so you want to buck up, right? 
Because here we're talking about the enemy, but how about when they're talking about you? Well, first of all, recognize who's behind it, but let's just look at this, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. It says, therefore, I urge you, I urge you. One translation says, I beg you, please, I beg you. It says, on the count of God, on account of God's mercy, on his kindness, the things that he wants to, the life that he wants to, he's created for you. I beg of you this, offer your bodies, listen, a living sacrifice. You know what a living sacrifice is? A, you're living dead. You're like, you're like the living dead. I don't know if they think that's a show or something. But you're, 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 you've been crucified with Christ. No longer it's not I that live, but it's Christ that lives within me. In other words, the dead man don't hurt. Because I recognize where, where the cuttings come from. That's not coming from people. And what happens is, it goes on to say this. It says, and so... Um, Offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your per- spiritual service. Verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Oh, so he says, there's a way that the world is trying to get you to think. Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that there's a God of this world that blinds the eyes of the unbeliever, or blinds the minds, rather, of the unbeliever. And he says, hey guys, don't think like the world thinks. Instead, instead let your mind be renewed and remember how, what God says when, what God, when he's talking, what it sounds like. Then you will be able to discern what is the good. Listen, then you'll be able to discern. In other words, you won't have to be judged because you're listening to what God says. If he calls it good, I call it good. I'll be able to discern what's good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. For the by grace given to me, again, he, and this is that same thing, don't become judged. For the by the grace given to me, I say unto every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Let me say it this in the, this way. Do not think of yourself more than you ought to. Not just more highly, more than you ought to. Because so often we want to be the defender. But God says, I'm your defender. Listen, things go on, and, and, and so you, when things go on and you've been hurt, that's when you really, it's really, the enemy really think, can build a case about what happened and why it happened. When it affects you, when it hurts you, recognize where, what, where, not only where that hurt come, came from, but that's only the beginning. When you've been hurt, listen, he came and he poked you, but he's not done. That's not good enough for him. He wants to destroy you. So if you've been cut, if you've been hurt, if you, wake up. Somebody is behind the firewall right now. And there's relationships in here this morning that have been hurt and been cut. And it's because there's somebody right now, they're they're behind the firewall. And you have an opportunity to respond according to the word of God and put the word of God in your mouth. If we're going to overcome, listen, it's not trying hard enough. It's not any of this stuff. The Bible says that, that we put bits in a horse's mouth. We steer a whole ship by a rudder. But our bodies were created to be steered, to be shaped or directed by our tongue. If you don't put the word of God in your mouth when you've been hurt, if you don't recognize that there's somebody behind that firewall and it's not enough just to cut you, to hurt you, to cut off that relationship, cut off that friendship. Listen, if he says it's cut off, who's talking? Is it leading you in the pit? Who? Because what did he say? He said he's the restorer. Listen, what the worm ate, how many of you know what the worm ate is gone? With the canker we're made, he says, he's the restorer of that. When there's nothing left, listen, so don't tell me that it's not going to work, that that relationship can't be mended. It can. Just recognize who poking and that he's not, he doesn't, he's, he wants to continue to go. You stop, you say, wait a minute, I see you, devil. And you take authority over him, and then you operate according to, Lord, what do you say? That's what I'm going to do. What do you say? Let's stand this morning. Lord, what do you say? Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> As we stand, let's just keep our, um, let's just bow our heads and close our eyes, if you don't mind. I know in my heart that there's people that have been hurt in here. And there's relationships that have been damaged. There's even marriages that are here, but you're together, but you're not united. You're divided. Matter of fact, some of you aren't even sleeping in the same bed. The Lord wants to heal that this morning. And the healing is going to start 
by the words of your mouth. So just with your heads bowed and your eyes closed right now, if you're needing healing in relationships or you've been hurt and you don't see how, listen, you don't see. But God wants you to see that he wants to bring restoration. If that's you this morning, just lift your hands to heaven, both hands to heaven, just lift them to heaven. If you're needing healing in relationships, if you've been play, just bombarded with thoughts of slander and thoughts that just have been hurtful, not only towards others, but they've actually been hurtful for, to you. They've kept you heavy. Keep your hands up. Just keep them up. With your hands lifted to heaven, I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Father, thank you for your help. Thank you for eyes to see and ears to hear your voice. I follow yours. Satan, take your hands off of every relationship, of my mind. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I apply the blood of Jesus. It is the impenetrable wall. You cannot cross. Now, as you go today, I want you to do this. I want you to find a scripture. Listen, a sword like this, like one like this. With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And you get that out of your mouth, not just here. I'm not saying to think it. Greater is he that's in me. When you're struggling, you keep on wanting to just... I just can't, I just can't. No, you can't. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Put it in your mouth and get him on the run. I'm telling you, if you just go look, just take take a moment, plug into your phone something like victory in Jesus, scriptures, relationship restored, scriptures, God is my hope, scriptures. Google it. And when one comes alive on the inside of you, let it out. Because the cool thing about God's Word is, it's kind of like, have you ever seen a video game with the heat-seeking missile? The Bible says that the Word is alive and it's active. It comes alive in you, but it wants to chase the enemy down. He runs, listen, he shudders at the name. At the what? The name. The, the Word of Jesus the words of Jesus put him on the run amen amen before we go bow your heads close your eyes real quick one more time if you if you're here this morning before I don't want to leave this place if you're here this morning and you said man I've just been separated from Jesus I got to come back to him this morning Uh, I just I just need to be know that I'm right with God this morning this is the call for a rededication just giving your heart back to Jesus this morning But then also, if you've never met Jesus, or you've only approached Him based upon your ability to do good, not upon the blood of Jesus, and you're here this morning, and you say, I'm done trying to do it on my own, but I got to know that I'm going to be with Jesus. I got to settle that lie from the enemy that you're not going to make heaven. Listen. There's, a, there's someone here this morning that there's a, you don't know, you really don't know if you're going to make heaven. You want to make heaven, but that's been a tormenting lie and a tormenting thought about, I don't know if I'm going to make it to heaven. Listen, this morning, it's time to settle that. So on either of those accounts, on the count to three, I'm going to have you raise your hand. One, two, three. Thank you, Lord, for those hands. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just say this after me. Say, Father, today, from this moment on, 
I welcome Jesus into my life as my Lord, as my Savior. Today, I declare Jesus is Lord of my life. I believe, I know that you sent your son Jesus to die for me, to shed his blood for my sins of yesterday and of the future. I receive right now righteousness, a knowing that I will be forever with you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. I know there was a lot of hands that went